Welcome everyone to GamerMeld. Today I've got a release date on Intel's upcoming Comet Lake H and Nvidia's Super Mobile GPUs. The thing that shall not be named has hurt the industry even more. Intel's XE GPU is impressive and you can combine it with an Intel iGPU. But first, check out today's sponsor, Drop. Formerly known as MassDrop, a group buy website with amazing deals on PC hardware. It's free to sign up, and if you do it today, you'll get $20 off your first drop made items. So head to the link in the description below. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, the Chinese site IT Home is reporting that Intel's upcoming Comet Lake H, as well as Nvidia's Super GPUs, are heading to a notebook near you fairly soon. According to IT Home, the notebook maker Mech Revo is set to hold an online press conference on April 2nd, where they'll announce new notebooks that support NVIDIA's Super GPUs. Not long ago, WCCF Tech claimed an announcement for April 2nd with availability on April 15th, meaning they're definitely coming soon. So far, it looks like NVIDIA is set to launch up to five new Super Mobile GPUs. Next, we have a continuation of the saga that is the thing that shall not be named. Last time, we saw the potential for record low shipments of motherboards and GPUs. This time, the annual hardware show Computex has been rescheduled for late September, and what was originally a five-day event is now only three. Not only that, but if you planned on purchasing hardware from Amazon, you may want to look elsewhere, at least for now, as shipment times have skyrocketed to weeks for a lot of hardware. Luckily, sites like Newegg still seem to have normal delivery times, but basically it's yet another loss from the thing that shall not be named. Next up, I've got a huge story on Intel's next-gen Tiger Lake processors, or should I say their new XE GPU architecture. Originally found and shared by RO Game, you can see that we have a 3D Mark benchmark that compares AMD's new Ryzen 9 4900 HS to an unnamed Intel processor. And according to RO Game, this is a Tiger Lake U chip, which is Intel's upcoming mobile line that has a new core design and the first chips with their XE graphics architecture, so it's definitely set to be a huge deal for Intel. Anyway, the processor here is a 4-core 8-thread part with a base clock of 2.7GHz and a boost of 2.8, which means the boost has likely been disabled here. What's crazy, or almost unbelievable, are the results. For one, while the CPU score is roughly half of AMD's, remember that Tiger Lake is half the cores and is running at abysmal clocks. And hey, maybe the clocks aren't correct, but the main point here is the GPU score. As you can see, Intel's new XE graphics actually beat AMD's here, and this has the best iGPU in AMD's Ryzen 4000 APU lineup. Plus, Intel's chip has a lower TDP than AMD's here. Basically, Intel's integrated GPUs are finally getting some serious performance, and that makes me a bit excited for their discrete GPUs. Of course, AMD is only using Vega here, so they have a ton of wiggle room with Navi, and if Intel releases Tiger Lake with a maximum of 4 cores like they did with Ice Lake, AMD will still have the fastest mobile CPUs. Let's just hope Intel's yield rates are better on 10 nanometers plus. Lastly for today, during an online discussion at GDC, the Intel developer Alan Hux discussed something we've seen suggested in past Linux code for the company's XE architecture. According to him, game developers could use DirectX 12 to get both their XE discrete GPU and integrated GPU to work together. Meaning instead of just choosing one, developers could leverage the horsepower in both the iGPU and discrete GPU. Of course, there's a couple major hurdles here. For one, it's hard enough to get devs to even use DirectX 12, let alone add code for those who have this specific hardware setup. I'd personally hope that this could have been done without needing any input from game developers at all. The second issue is that you'll have to not only have an Intel CPU, but you'll need their upcoming XE discrete GPU. Basically, it's exciting, but also a bit of a letdown from what could have been. Either way, we'll have to see how well Intel pushes this, and who knows, maybe it won't be very hard on devs and some will actually do it. As always, time will tell. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for Intel's next-gen XE GPUs, or are you just ready for NVIDIA's mobile supercards? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.